This is the InfoWars Money Bomb. I'm Jakari Jackson, back again. I'm joined in studio by Mr. Matt Williams. How you doing, Matt? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Doing real good. Okay, the sites to donate, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, and also you can check out the eBay page, great auction items on there, and also the InfoWars shop. Now, Matt, we had a chance to talk during the break, so I just want to get your, your take on a few of these things. You were telling me about the, uh, the, the DHS bullet purchase, and you are telling me why they need hollow point, you know, instruments well as far as the bullet purchase you know it's twofold one they bought as many rounds as they actually did because in the firearms industry everyone's taught to train as though they're fighting right. um, because you're developing mu muscle memory um, you want to stick to that for those fundamentals changing things that you practice at the range only to do something completely different out in real life is fatal okay. so there's some truth to the practice ammo um, the bigger problem I see is federal ammunition themselves. Why the bullet that they're selling is, it's actually what I carry. Um, they've, they've been in bed with the government for a long time, uh, particularly Lake City Arsenal. Lake City Arsenal, which is a government ar arsenal, uh, they sort of done a lot of work with packaging for both, uh, military as well as civilians. And sometimes ammunition made for the military would be sold as surplus to civilians and still is today. Right. Um, I see that purchase as more of a good old boy purchase. You know, you got CCI Spear, which does Gold Dot Lawman brand. It's almost half the price, and it does the identical thing. Um, so it didn't make much sense to me why they actually bought Federal HST to practice with. Right. Um, it's a fantastic round, and there's really no surviving it. Um, there hasn't. I haven't heard of anyone who's survived a round from it yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it seemed more of like. A, doing a friend a favor type deal. So if nothing else, it was uh, maybe a waste of money? I think it was a waste of money. I think buying that much ammo of, uh, of that quality, uh, absolute waste of money. Well, you could be a lot more cost effective, especially in the economy we're in right now. You don't need to be spending that kind of money. Um, you know, in the industry, everyone tries to utilize a percentage based on a one-shot stop. Right. Well, there's no magic gun. It doesn't matter how powerful the gun is. They don't turn people off. Right. Um, there's still muscle movement, and some, unless it's a headshot, there's brain activity, in which case some people have literally had their li heart liquefied and fought long enough to kill people. Wow. So, I mean, we're not very different from um, wild animals, and many of, of you out there who are deer hunters, which camera, there we go. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you've hit a deer and seen a deer just go hundreds of yards into the forest. While most humans will submit to that kind of pain, mm -hmm. there is a rare breed out there that won't. And unfortunately, that rare breed is usually malicious. So it's usually the person you're facing. So I can understand purchasing the ammo. I just don't agree with the uh, intelligence of the purchase. I think it was just, a, you know, as I said, uh, an old boys club type thing where they were just doing each other a favor. All right. Our guest is Matt Williams, and the site is gunfightersclinic.com, correct? Correct. All right. Now, Matt, tell us a little bit about what you do. I, I know you personally, but you are a firearms instructor mm -hmm. and you're also a armorer, a gunsmith. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, I've been a competitive shooter, um, a little bit of a hunter. I've been slacking lately, but uh, trying to get back out there. Uh, I've also done uh, instruction on a personal level. So I do basic uh, handgun classes, tactical handgun classes from beginner to advanced. Okay. We also, um, I'm certified through the state of Texas to provide the concealed handgun license, which has been really the main staple of the business. Um, I actually look forward to the tactical handgun classes after doing, you know, 3,400 CHL classes. Right. Uh, and then at the same time, I also do armor work, um, whether it be on an individual's gun, a movie set, uh, anywhere where armor is needed, really. It's just uh, picking up the extra work. Worked as a gunsmith locally here. Had a great time doing it, um, but uh, instruction really has taken over a large part of my life. So uh, came on to the Alex Jones show, started working. We uh, did the beta test for Brothers in Arms, yes, um, which is a little bit of limbo right now, but I see uh, a lot of possibility for revival. But uh, that's pretty much the, gi the gist of it. That's uh, what I do, how, how I do it. Um, the CHL, as I said, is really, I'm sorry, the concealed handgun license is really the, uh, the focal point of what we provide, though. Okay, good. All right, the number to donate for the InfoWars Money Bomb, one 
253-3139. Again, that's 1-888-253-3139. And if you have a question from Matt or possibly even from myself, you can call 877-789-ALEX. Once again, the number to call in is 877-789-ALEX, and that will get you on the air with Matt Williams, firearms instructor. Now, Matt, we had a chance to speak a little bit earlier about another topic, that being the Luby's Massacre yeah. back in 1991. And you thought this was a very significant, um, well, I mean, I hate to say that something like this was significant, this shooting, it but it brought to light the issue of concealed carry in the state of Texas. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I mean, our, our legislatures over decades of time have constantly robbed us of our liberties and rights, and they've done it for the safety of a few base, well, it's really not safety for anyone. The person's already dead. Um, basically, they've implemented laws, making it more restrictive on what we can purchase, what's imported into the country, and what us as civilians can actually own in comparison to uh, our military. Um, there's been a lot of heated debate. We're a civilized nation. We've came a long way in 200 years, but at the same time, the terms of our Second Amendment were put into place for a specific reason. That reason was life, liberty, or death. It wasn't just a hunt. It wasn't just a hunt. Actually, to be honest, back then, hunting is a privilege. It's always been a privilege. It's mm -hmm. never been a right anywhere on this planet. They implemented it, I believe, in, it was in uh, 2001. The Supreme Court acknowledged it for the right of self-defense as well as hunting. It's just self-defense, yes. But they downplayed it. The thing that irritated me is you had the National Rifle Association that was pretty happy and kudos about it. I could see their point. You know, getting hunting as a right is a big step. But the teeth of the Constitution stipulate, you know, that the, you know, our rights to bear arms shall not be infringed. And it wasn't stating the government, it wasn't stating the military, it was stating the people. That's right. And... Uh, they twist it and contort it and they do everything else to try to change it. And at the end of the day, we need them. I mean, there's crime out there. It's real. And people die every day because of it. In many cases, it's because they don't have a means of self-defense. That's exactly right. With the Luby massacre, you had individual walk, uh, run his truck into the restaurant, get out with two handguns. He was serious. Uh -huh, and he systematically executed people like they were cattle. He wasn't rushing. He was taking his sweet time about it. And anyone who tried to rush him to take him down was shot and killed. And it became a very pivotal point, not only for Texas, but the entire country. Exactly. Um, they took forth that step to issue concealed handguns because they realized 911, that's the mop up crew. They don't stop crime, they try their best, and it's not a lack of their effort. Right. It's just not realistic. You don't care how many cops you have on the streets. I don't care what level of power you give them. Right. You will never stop crime. It's an inherent nature of mankind. So to rob us of our rights to defend ourselves without being able to guarantee protection, right. in my opinion, is criminal in itself. That's a very, very good point. Now, we saw recently in the debates with Barack Obama saying that he wants to ban semi-automatic weapons. So first, can you give me your take on semi-automatic weapons? Do you think that, you know, that's something necessary or even just something that we should be able to have? Well, that's the whole thing is people... Oh, excuse say, me, fully automatic weapons. Fully, well, fully automatic weapons. Right now, it's been legal to buy and sell fully automatic uh, weapons, suppressors, destructive devices, uh, certain items called any other weapon or AOW in the industry, which uh, boils down to pen guns, to grenades. <sighs> A lot of people put the word necessary into it, and it's almost like it's almost like opening the Bible and interpreting God's word. It's pretty mm -hmm. to the point. You know, you either do it or you don't. Yes. And the Constitution is pretty much the same way. And our forefathers had the brilliance, had the capability, and had the realistic approach of what was going on with the British. They knew that there may be a day where we may need those guns to fight off tyranny once again. And that right. is why it was put in there. Not for self-defense of a home, uh, someone who's going to break into your house, which is definitely an application. Definitely. And it's been real popular lately is for your stories. But uh, hunting had nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, um, you know, in, in Europe, only the rich hunt. It was an aristocrat sport. Right. You know, poor people didn't hunt. Matter of fact, there were people who were hung for hunting on private lands. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, you'd be, that, you'd be either incarcerated or executed, depending on your crime. So you couldn't hunt on it. It was a big crime. It was like how the Wild West was with cattle wrestling. You steal someone's cow, you paid the price. Right. 
Now, if you touched on something that's really good. You said that when we talk, we talk about the Second Amendment right. We talk about you know somebody's their their right to bear an arm. You know, it's nothing that 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 can be given to you to to you to the from the government. I really messed that sentence up. But <laughs> getting back on the topic now, it's my thing. Yeah. So. You know, when you have the Second Amendment right, it's your right to bear arms. It's nothing that they can give you, your government can give you, because they can't be there to protect you all the time. And going a little step further than that, you had the excellent point that, you know, the Second Amendment right is not not to just to hunt or to fight off some guy who may break into your house at 3 in the morning. It's to stop a, a tyranny, which could be your government. Mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, a lot of people don't want to talk about that, but you bring up the point that if need be, you know, even here in the United States of America, you may have to fight off your government to some extent. It may not be. Well, you're right. It could be a multitude of things. It could be civil unrest, mass disobedience. It could be invasion. It could be. Yes. It, it could be revolution. It could be a lot of things. You got to keep in mind the people, the the frameworkers of our Constitution, developed it in a time where they just got finished fighting the British. Yes. It's not like they didn't know what they were talking about. It's not like these weren't the scholars of their generation. Right. These people knew very damn well what was being done. Matter of fact, when Thomas Jefferson wrote that, right. and it was revised, the only change that was revised is the capitalization of letters. Okay. That's the only thing they, uh, that they changed. They say they put a comma in there, and the comma was for a brief pause to allow the militia to keep arms. Well, that's ridiculous. It's, it's redundant. Mm -hmm. Of course, a militia is going to have it. A lot of people say the militias are United States military. It's not. The militia is a regulated, a well-regulated militia. Well, the term "well-regulated" 200 years ago meant disciplined and trained. Yes. So that could be anybody. So it's just an organization. Keep in mind, we fought off the British, not with a military, but with an organized militia. Well-regulated militia, just like you and me. Yes. Okay, well, we got loaded phones. <laughs> All right, not to cut you off, Matt. Sorry. Let's say uh, Scott in Virginia. Let's let's see what, hear what you got, Scott. Hey guys, first time caller. Um, I just wanted to know. You said we have a right to bear arms, which I agree with. I just wanted to know about the access to ammunition. Do you think they'll tax it like cigarettes in order to curb our availability to have it? I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Thank you, guys. Matt. Uh, it's a great question. Um, actually, they've been taxing it for the last 20 years. Uh, I used to be able to go out and buy ammunition for pennies on the dollar in comparison to what it is today. I mean, literally, I'd say 20 years ago, I could buy it for what you reload for now. And when you reload, it's like 10 cents on the dollar. They have taxed it to a degree, but you also got to look into the components of the precious metals, the brass, the, the copper, the lead, and so forth. That also actually commands a premium. I do see them wanting to tax it. They've attempted to do it before. They'll try to do it again. It is our job as Americans to every time they try one of these things to meet them at that line and that door with our teeth bared. If you cower, if you say, okay, and become complacent because you're on your couch with your iPad, it's your fault. It's not my fault. It's not anyone else's fault. It's your fault. You didn't take the action to fight back and say, no, this is unacceptable. So I do see it um, as a constant thing they keep putting in. I think it's a great question. Um, the only way to combat it is, as I said, to meet them at the hilt. Don't let them push these things onto you. Uh, we get taxed to death as it is. Um, most of our taxes, well, I wouldn't say most, but a good portion of them go overseas where our interests really aren't met. Yeah, the bankers over there. Yeah. The number to call in is 877-789-ALEX. Let's go to our next caller. Manone in Alaska, you are on the air. Oh, oh, I'm so excited, Jakari. Oh, you're, 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 you're my favorite. I'm so excited. I'm donating oh. tonight. I, I just, oh, yes, I please, doing... please donate. The yes, number is 888-253-3139. Please go ahead with your question and or comment. Okay, my question and or comment. Um, I do, I would like to know how to let you know about some old movies about GMOs with your email, but I know it's only appropriate for your your guest to get this question. Um, there, there's. I really have a big question because I've been around a lot of Mormon people and I've been in their storehouses, right. especially up here in Alaska. And I saw all kinds of ordnance and 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 reloading and powder. And I mean, these people have. You know, they've they've been preppers for for eons. 
and I'm, I'm just curious as to what your guest thinks as to why uh, the certain candidate isn't, isn't, more, isn't puffed more because I, I could go to a whole bunch of Mormon people's houses now. These people are high up, right. and, and they're loading, they're, they've been loading shells forever. So just so I can give him a specific question, can you okay. tone that down to a specific question? I don't know what to do, Jakari, because I'm just so excited. I'm actually talking to you. You don't know how popular you are up here in Anchorage. <laughs> my my friend Eileen Bear, she has a Grand Duchess uh, furniture store. She's got the papers there, and she and her husband love you, and, and they, they'd love for you to come up and be able to speak. She'd host an event. Wow. I, I'm, well, You're okay. very popular. You're a very popular young man. All right, all right, Alex. You, you heard that. Get me on the plane to, to Alaska. Yeah, uh, please. We'll do what we can. Thank you. Uh, Matt, go ahead with your, with your response. Uh, it's real simple. Um, we, uh, and I, and I don't, I don't pretend to speak for the Mormon people. I'm not a Mormon. Um, I have some friends that are Mormons. Um, from what it's been told to me, it's part of their faith to have two years of preparations for survival purposes. It's not something that's new. It's something that they've been doing for a couple hundred years. Is that correct? Are you still on the line? No. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Man. So uh, basically, it's just in their nature. Um, one of the largest prepper communities you'll uh, you'll see, uh, some of the largest firearm sales you'll see, ammunition sales are based out of Utah. You know, they're avid uh, shooters. Right. It's really that simple. So they stay prepped. Okay. We'll go now to Stephanie in Texas. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I've got a couple questions for Matt. Um, Matt, I've got a uh, concealed weapons license. Uh, when I lived in Virginia, I've been here in Austin for about a year and a half. And when I was in my class, I know that Texas recognized Virginia, you know, to, to be able to have a concealed weapon. Correct. But now that I'm a resident in Texas, do I need to get a concealed weapons license here because of a resident? No. No, uh, uh, we have reciprocity in 33 states, so does Virginia. So basically what happens is when you move here, uh, previous to 2007, yes, you would have had to relicense. But since 2007, the reciprocity has become more firm with these states, in which case you only have to, uh, you, you will have to retake the exam when your, yours expires. You can't renew it. You'll actually have to take the Texas exam, which is a full course. But your CHL is good until the date of expi expiration. Okay, uh, one more quick question. Um, sure. So I only have one handgun at, time, at this time, and I wanted to get another one. It's registered. I know they're going to come, you know, eventually. And I'd like to get a couple more, to, you know, bury, whatever. And um, how, uh, is, is it possible to do that legally without registering? Yeah, in the state of Texas, there is no registration. Um, yeah, Texas Texas is very unique to the country, as you can well imagine, when it comes to firearms. Uh, we are actually the only place in the United States where you can take a firearm into the Capitol building. They actually welcome it. Wow. Matter of fact, there's the general public line, and then there's the concealed handgun license line. It will take you anywhere between 20 to 45 minutes to get through uh, the standard line. Concealed handgun license, two to three minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Okay. All right. So I can just go to a gun show and pick out what I want, and I'm good to go. You're here in Austin? Yes. Uh, yeah. There's actually a gun show this weekend, and there's actually several great shops in, in the area as well. Okay. Well, can you tell me quickly where the gun show is this weekend? The Saxon Gun Show is going to be on North Lamar and... North Lamar and yeah, no, I can't. But I, uh, <laughs> it was a good effort. <laughs> yeah, if you type in Saxet, S A X E T, the the dress code. Okay. Tell me again, right. guys. I will do. Okay. Oh, Sorry, Expo Center. So yeah, I, I apologize. Travis County Expo Center. So if you check that oh, okay, out, great. you can also check out some of the gun ranges. Um, you know, and everyone's really apt with uh, ladies purchasing handguns. There's a growing number of it. So feel free. You know, go have fun with it. I, I, I spent a lot of time at the gun range in Virginia when I got my, my weapon. I, I've never really used one, so um, I did pretty good, actually. <laughs> and so, I might suggest the, uh, the gunfighters clinic when you have to requalify for your yeah. concealed carry permit. If you need any apartment. license, if you need any instruction, give us a call. All right, will do. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. You have a wonderful evening. All right, All right thank, thank you. you. And we'll move on now to Jack in Texas. You're on the air, Jack. 
Hey, how are you guys doing? Pretty Real good. good. Hey, I'm going to put you on the hot spot. 1968 Gun Act. Um, you already know about it. My point is, is I know plenty of felons, unfortunately, that have, uh, they still conceal carry. Mm -hmm. And they just, they don't care. And their motto is, if you get caught conceal carry, you're a dummy. How do you guys feel about that? I know, pe I know law, well, not law abiding citizens, but I know people with non criminal records who carry with no license. Well, just to give our audience a little background, the 68 Gun Control Act said that, well, that's where they came up with the law where if you're a convicted felon, you can't carry a handgun. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, yeah, and even in the state of Texas, convicted felons can have firearms. They just have to wait till five years after the last date of any kind of time served, and that firearm has to remain in their house. But yes, in the state of Texas, felons can have guns. Well, I, I didn't and, know the, <laughs> and the point I was making is, is a lot of these guys are uh, veterans um, of wars, and is what there is is they they're not out to harm anybody, but they just their mindset. Is this? If something goes down, I'm gonna I'm gonna be there. Have you ever heard Does that this make old? Any sense? Oh, absolutely. If you have you ever heard the old adage, uh, it's best to be judged by twelve than carried by six. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> unfortunately, I live in Austin, and we are kind of liberal, so it's gonna it's gonna bite either way. Uh, that's why I try to stay on the outskirts, buddy. I completely feel you on that. Okay. Yeah, that was it, man. I was hoping I'd get you guys nervous, but apparently, I didn't. Nah, no, no. Actually, I covered that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it's. Yeah, Alex ran and he said, talk about the 68 Gun Control Act, so I, I knew a little bit about it. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, they keep passing. Uh, there's, you know, the 1934, there was 1968, then they had the 86 ban. Uh, the 86 ban stopped all new manufactured machine guns from getting transferred over into civilian hands. And then you had the Clinton ban, you know, which was in 90, uh, was it 93, 92, 93. And that had a 10-year sunset. No, it was 93. Yeah, and it did absolutely nothing. Crime actually went up. Yes. Yeah, c c no, criminals I, don't go and buy guns at gun shops. Get you guys all stirred up, and it didn't work. But no, I, hey, you, stand but true. I appreciate you trying. Through. All right, thanks for your call. All right, the number to donate is 1-888-253-3139. That's for the InfoWars Money Bomb, our 48-hour broadcast. I'm sitting right here with... Matt Williams, firearms instructor, and we will take another call. Is that Dan in Hawaii? Yes, sir. Are you there? Go Dan ahead. Hawaii. Go ahead, sir. Hey, I just want to add a question. Uh, I live in uh, Hawaii, which is one of the uh, top five most uh, restricted uh, areas as far as gun ownership. And I'm just wondering if you guys had any comment on what we can do to change that. Here in Hawaii, I live on one of the smallest islands. We don't have. We used to have a two firing ranges. You were allowed to carry your gun from your home to the firing range or from your home to hunt. But now that the firing ranges have closed, it's basically illegal to carry a gun in your vehicle. Um, in Hawaii, there's no concealed carry uh, permit. You're not allowed to concealed carry. And I was just wondering if I could get any insight from either one of you guys as to how restrictive it really is. If, are we really the in the top five? Is, one of the most restrictive states as far as gun laws. Okay, I'll let Matt answer that. I'm just curious, what do you hunt in Hawaii? Oh, uh, we hunt boars, mm -hmm. which are uh, wild pig. We also have goats. So I live on uh, Kauai, which is the uh, the smallest island, the oldest island, the most uh, the farthest west. And uh, so, yeah, we got the wild boars. Great. Uh, it's called Kalua pork. So if you ever come to Hawaii, get the Kalua pork. It's excellent. Yeah, no, I've, I've always wanted to actually do that. Um, I always wanted to come to Hawaii. The best thing I can tell you is numbers. Get as many people as you possibly can that are advocates of firearms and then storm your leg local legislature. Let him know that all of you want to have a right to self-defense. Um, I mean, outside of a spear gun, you're in pretty much trouble then. Absolutely. And we also have a, a three-step system. that when, when you're going hunting, you have to have the gun in one area, the ammunition in another area, and it's got to be out of your reach. So it's very restrictive, and like I said, there's no concealed carry allowance here. So if you're caught with a gun in your vehicle and it's within reach, you can get convicted of a felony, and it's just wow. it's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, I've never heard uh, really – I've never been to Hawaii. I've always wanted to go. Um, I hope to one day take my girlfriend out there. But, you know <laughs> – not knowing the area, the populace, um, and knowing most of the lower 48's populace, 
it's hard for me to comment. But the best way to change that's with, with your local government. Um, thankfully, it's a very small government and small state, so you don't have to go far. But, it's one of the most liberal states in the United States. The island I live on has a population of about 50,000 local residents and about 20 to 30,000 tourists. So luckily the crime rate is really low, but it would be nice to be able to have the option to protect your... And I tell you what, if, if I came out there, one of the reasons I'd want to come out is actually go boar hunting. I hear the boar hunting is fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. Those boars are dangerous, so most, most of the locals go with the dogs, and the dogs wear them out, you know, if you can't get them with the first shot. And uh, so we got some amazing amazing uh, hiking and hunting and fishing and sightseeing, and, yeah, you guys would Sounds love it. Good. Come out in the winter. Yeah, uh, humpback whales are coming through. All right. Uh, we definitely appreciate your call, Dan. We're going to move pretty quick to get to our last two callers. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, uh, is that Ryan in Wyoming? Yeah, we're here. Okay, Ryan. What's your question? Hey, how's it going? Going um, good. My question is, uh, I know that it's uh, you legally have to register your firearm when you purchase it from a, a dealer. But do you think it's right? Do you think I should have to do that? Hold on. First and foremost, where uh, in Wyoming you have to register? Because it's, well, no, it's not a federal Colorado, requirement. Colorado, I'm calling from Wyoming. Okay, um, I, I can't speak for law outside of the state of Florida, federal law, or the state of Texas. However, I can tell you this. Gun registration is not done by the federal government. It's done by the local or state government. So you'd have to check in with that. Once again, uh, go, rolling back to a previous question on the last call, that's something you get with your state legislature about. I'm sorry, about. There's only like five states in the in the country that I think of that you need to register a handgun. Uh, I can tell you, Texas definitely doesn't want one. Right. And that you, that form you fill out when you purchase the handgun, you know what I'm talking about? Is it the yeah. ATF form? I, yeah. Okay. Can yeah. you guys get a document cam shot? Because actually I wanted to talk about this. But go ahead uh, with your question. Yeah, this document right here basically has to be kept on file by the FFL, which is a federally firearms oh, licensed dealer, for a period of 20 years. If you buy more, well, they have different laws in Texas, New Mexico, California, and uh, Arizona, thanks to Eric Holder. But here, if you buy more than one gun, a special letter has to go to the ATF to notify them of not only you, but the weapons you purchased. So that's like one of the stories that you'd mentioned earlier, Jakari, about the individual who was being harassed for ammo. Yes. It was the dealer that sold him out. No one else would have known. Right. So he was suspicious. He made the phone call. Some dealers will do that. Some dealers adamantly stay away from it. And that's something that you want to consider when you start taking your hard-earned money into a gun shop is what kind of people are they. All right. Did he answer right. your question? Okay. Yeah. And check, I mean, check to see if you actually have to get it registered in Colorado. I don't think you do. But okay. I, I'm so not certified I, I or licensed I, there, so you know, it's hard to tell. If I don't have to get it registered, it's, it's just a good idea not to, right? Well, it, it's a violation of your inalienable right. I mean, why why should you have to register? That's the bigger question. Yeah, I don't want to be on a list or anything because I bought a firearm that I'm, you know, my right's not supposed to be infringed upon. Exactly. And I mean, I, I myself, I'm a public figure in the firearms industry, so I actually... <laughs> I'll do stuff just so they do notify them. All right. We definitely appreciate your call. We're just trying to get to our last call. We'll go to David in Georgia. Quick, what is your question, sir? Yeah, hi. Uh, I just want to say good evening to both of you. Um, good evening. Long time listener, first caller. Oh. I just had a couple of questions um, recommending to friends and family, like what kind of firearms uh, they should purchase if they've never had one or if they should get a handgun and a, and a rifle or what what. Uh, kind of weapons does Matt recommend it's a really, to uh, first-time buyers? It's a really broad question. Um, men and women are different. You have about a minute to answer. Ooh, okay. This is Jeopardy. Uh, we have... Alex Trebek's going to sue us now. Uh, basically, uh, comfort's a big factor. Do not get the little cute pink gun for the wife. They usually recoil very violently. She'll shoot four or five rounds out of it, yell at you for it, and never shoot it again. So she won't develop the kind of proficiency she needs with that weapon in order to, to repel an attack. If it's for a lady, don't get a small gun. Get a big gun. Big guns absorb recoil. That recoil is one of the main factors that intimidates them not to learn more. So make sure she's comfortable. When she grabs that gun and it feels good in the hand, that's the gun she needs. Okay, real quick. Okay, uh, real quick. Uh, home defense, what do you recommend? Home defense. One gun. 12 gauge. 12 gauge. 
All right, that's it for our section of the InfoWars Money Bomb. I want to definitely want to thank Matt Williams for sitting in with us. His site is gunfightersclinic.com. The d number to donate is 1-888-253-3139. Thanks for watching. Is that Conan music? Yeah. Battle Pro! <laughs> October 18th and 19th, 48-hour special transmission. The tyrants need to know we're coming for them. And the info war is expanding. And the people of America and the world are awakening and behind us. While the global scientific dictatorship is busy injecting toxins into our water supply to dumb us down, we're busy injecting reality into society. It's the beginning of the end for the new world order. Donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>